Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Drew Clark, uh, or Soda Pop Sketches, if you'd like, on uh, Instagram and Twitter. And today I thought that maybe I would do a uh, coloring tutorial today um, and show you guys how I color things. Yeah. So let's get into it, shall we? So I have three different ways of coloring that I'd like to show you today. Um, and let's start off with the Corgi, my Corgi. So I use Procreate for a lot of my drawings. I also use Clip Studio Paint sometimes. Um, I will do a another stream sometime. Uh, detailing how to use Clip Studio Paint, even though I'm not, I'm not at all a expert on it. Um, I'm way more familiar with Procreate. I've been using it for as long as I've had my iPad, which is about almost a full, like a full, almost two years now, ish, roughly. Um, yeah, so let's get started so procreate uh, has this wonderful feature and i think you can also do it in clip studio paint as well but i need to i i need to look up more tutorials for myself personally um it has this wonderful feature that if you draw a shape in a uh in a layer uh you can you can just fill it in. It will just fill in automatically if you drag the color over. So let me show you. So you just go, and I normally start off coloring this way just so that I don't miss any spots. So it can be perfectly colored in and I don't go over the lines or, you know, make too many mistakes just kind of it kind of um, gets uh, takes time that I would have spent correcting stuff um, usually I just it gives me more time gives me that that time so I can spend it doing other things like starting a new drawing or you know, something like that, or even spending more time coloring it, like, in a more, in a different fashion. Okay, so, so we've got, so you can, sh you can see, based on this little, this little, um, oh gosh, preview, um, you can see that I have all the lines, like, um, good and closed, but just to make sure, let's, Hide our line work. See, so we've got it all completely connected. So it'll do this. Ta-da! <laughs> it's really handy and it's really nice, especially when you are like me and don't have that much time for doing a lot of stuff you know, when you're running around. So now that we have that, sorry, I tried to do it earlier. Um, now that we have that, we're going to alpha lock it. Now alpha locking, or you can alpha lock it, or use um, or use this thing called uh, clipping masks. So alpha lock changes the actual layer that you're working on. It um, it locks the layer. So you can't color on the out, you can't color on the outside of where we drew. So it's just within these bounds. Whereas with clipping masks, you can have multiple of them layered on top of each other. If you're familiar with Photoshop, it works the same like Photoshop. Um, but for this, we'll just, we'll work with clipping masks so we can be as least destructive as possible. But if I'm just coloring, just to color, usually I use um, alpha lock just because it's faster and I 
I know what I, I know what I'm doing to a fault. <laughs> but we're just we're just gonna show you how to, how we do things here. So clipping mask, so you just click that and it will automatically go to the layer below it. It'll it'll um, it'll mask. So like if you're having if you put so like if you have like a face mask that you're putting on, it only covers your face. It doesn't cover your neck, your ears, you know, all that stuff, right? It just covers your face because it's just the mask for the face. Um, this works kind of the same way. So I'll show you, I'll show you real quick, sorry, what it does. So let's grab a color, let's say Let's make it, let's make her yellow. So we're just gonna color, we're just gonna color outside the lines just to show you how it works. Okay, so I've made a mess, right? And instead of going through and taking all the time that I could to go through and clean all of this up, Instead, with clipping masks, I can just click this little thing and it gets rid of it. Woo! Yay! Okay, so now that we made her yellow, we're going to we're going to keep going with cell shading. So, cell shading, sorry, <laughs> is uh, it's based around old animation cells, I believe where in in the animation industry in the old days um you, you would have an ink and paint department and you would also have your normal the animation department and the ink de, ink and paint department the animation department works mainly in pencil and paper um and the ink and paint works in cells and paints cells are basically just like little pieces of plastic that you would put over um, that you put over the paper drawings, the pencil drawings, and you would draw, you would draw the outline of it, and then you would paint, and then you would paint over it. So it's just like, it's just what it's called. It's basically a very simple form of painting. It's very meticulous and just, it's just pretty straightforward. So we're going to do cell shading today with the corgi and I'm going to make her ear, oh, my brush is a little too big. We're going to just make her ears and it's also a very flat sort of shading. You can definitely go in and make it a lot and give it more depth, but the majority of cell shading is, it's not meant for detail. It's meant for quick, quick, basic, um, easy, sort of just kind of slapping stuff on uh, to give it some sort of dimension. And then that's really it. So, to do, okay, so we've got those colored in. Now we're gonna take this and we're gonna go um we're gonna make it a little darker and shade shade in the little paws her little paws and her eyebrows okay and then for the eyes what i do is i like to color in it completely white the brightest white, mostly. Usually I'll do different um, different colors for the um, the white of the eye, but that depends on what I'm drawing. If it's a demon or uh, some sort of magical creature, I'll change I'll change the white of the eye to black or purple or whatever it is. Um, but usually it's white or gray if I'm doing a uh, 
goodness, <laughs> if I'm doing a more realistic, because if you actually look at the white of someone's eyes, it's never pure white. Fun fact. <laughs> um, so you have the whites of the eyes and let's give her, let's give her blue eyes today. That's what I'm feeling. So usually what I do is I fill in the eye, the iris of, of the eyes um, with the, uh, with the darkest color on the back. And then I will go in afterwards and clean that up. So then we're going to go a little lighter. And I personally, I've started to like, um, like to do, I like to do um, hearts, like make them look like little heart eyes, because I think it's cute. But you can do, you can do whatever you'd like. Um, I also sometimes just do straight across. Uh, but usually I do three colors. I do um, three different shades of the same color. So in this case, it's blue. And after I drawn the hearts, I do a I do a little little iris in the there to give it a sense of direction, and then. I go in and I get a very light shade, a very, very light shade because if it's too dark, it'll look funny. <laughs> it'll look like a demon dog, but this is just to give a little shadow in on the eye and it just gives it a little, a little bit more dimension, like I said before. So like that a little bit there we go oh oops okay so I'm going to add I can actually make that just a tad bit darker just really quickly so make it a little darker just so you can see it a little better okay and then we're gonna go in and we're going to self shade these the ears that some dimension too. Okay. And maybe a little here. Okay. So now that that's done, I like to do blush as well on the on all of my figures because I think it's adorable. Again. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the same color that we used for our shading and I use a soft brush and let me show you. So it looks like this, but I'd like to make it huge and just kind of lightly, gently, very softly go by the cheeks on the cheeks the corners of the of my um, subject sorry and then what I do after that is I go a little bit light a little darker and make it a little smaller and I add a little bit more blush darker than that so you can see it and it's right next to the corner of the eye because it gives it more of a innocent look I suppose I don't know I that's just how I do it I think it's cute and then you are going to want to clean that up next to the eyes and clip the mask again all right so that's good but if you wanted to just give it a little bit more opacity, just so that it's not so strong, you can do that as well. And then we'll go back to this layer, give it a little tongue, a little, little tongue. Oh, whoops, still on the wrong, 
you got to watch your brushes. <laughs> Make sure you're on the right brush. Where's your window? Is the right color? That looks a bit too... Okay, there we go. All right, so we're just coloring in the tongue. Oh, whoops. Coloring that in. <laughs> and the... And the nose is going to be just a slightly, slightly lighter gray than what we have for the, for the uh, outline. So usually, oh, and of course, the bow. We need to color in the bow. Let's color in the bow. And we'll cell shade it as well. All right, so now that that is all done, pretty much, we have our cute little corgi. Um, at this point, I personally like to color my line work because I love line work, but I think that it looks kind of flat when it's just, when it's just one color. So what I do is I, usually go to alpha I usually alpha lock the layer but again for this for this purpose I will do clipping mask just so that we are being as least destructive as possible um, and what I like to do is I like to take my shape my shading color and go just a little darker for the oh whoops actually no that'll be fine okay for the skin tone and just color over where the skin lines are. <laughs> this will make sense in a second because again, we're gonna clip the mask. So even if it looks like a mess now, it won't in a, mo in a moment. And we can always, um, because we're working non-destructively, we can always go in and correct it afterwards to Okay. And we are standing up. Wee! Okay. All right. So now that we've got that. We're going to clip it, and there we go. And I also like to go in on the on the eyes and give it a little bit of a skin. I guess you could call it a skin layer and a um, and eyelashes, <laughs> I suppose. Um, so that's what I that's what I do, and then with the eyes. I do the same sort of a thing. All right. And do the, oops. Color. Alrighty. Um, let's actually back down a little bit. Right, and we need the tongue. Also, just gives it a little bit more fun flair. To personally, I love I love colored line art. Whenever I see someone that has line, uh, colored line work, I just it just gives it more of a pop. Personally, even if you're doing it traditionally. Um, which is a lot more difficult unless you have a light box, uh, which I could go into that too. But 
that'll be for another time. All right, that's good. And there we go. That is how I cell shade. And then of course, with all of our artwork, we should sign it. Ta-da! All right, so here's cell shading. Um, here's my cell shading and my corgi. <laughs> How I color, uh, how I color with cell shading. It's very simple. It's a very simple process. It's very straightforward. Um, it just adds a little bit more depth uh, without going full rendering, which rendering is paint. It's a more painterly, like realistic style. Um, when when artists use the term render, they mean um, how long it takes for something to look uh, realistic, rendering it to look like a real world object. Does that make sense? Okay, anyway, let's move on. 